Hi, this is Ant Minor Repair, and today we're going to remove this BM1397 chip. I'm using my new uh, Yihua 1000B workstation. It basically has a hot plate underneath here. I've got it set to 160 degrees, and then in a few minutes, when it gets hot enough, I'm going to move this uh, this gun over that is a IR infrared gun and I'm going to heat it up all the way up to about uh, I, I go up to around 220 240 and then I'm going to remove all that stuff and then pop on the hot heat gun and remove this chip um, this is a chip I put on so far I've successfully planted two chips but this one um, the silly sensor right here hit the chip and it, it went awry so I haven't been able to get it to to refloat. If you're interested in these topics, um, I'm going to give a full review of this station, basically show you how to work, and I'm still really trying to figure it out so I can give you guys the right temperature settings. But if you're interested in these topics, please hit subscribe, and there's a little bell there. If you hit that, you can um, be notified when I create new videos. And last but absolutely not least, we have a Discord uh, server all things ant miner repair and even some other boards are going in there and there's a lot of knowledgeable people from l3s to um all sorts of other uh, other ant miner boards and a lot of people with great experience so I'm, I'm really appreciative they've joined and they're actually um helping people solve some of their problems all right so please join the Discord server. The link is in the description of the video above you or below you, however you're watching the video. So um, I've had this on the heater. I've set the heater to 160 degrees. I think it's a little warm, but I don't think the board ever gets that high. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is this is a sensor, and I can hit this. You see in the very corner of my finger over here, I, I open it up to turn on the infrared. It has a temperature sensor. It says this board is 133 degrees Celsius. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and heat this chip up using the infrared light, then heat it with the soldering iron if I have to, and then remove it. I put a little flux around the chip just to make removal easier. Um, so far, I really like the station. I haven't fried um, any chips yet. So um, usually they explode out the side with some yellow or blue goop or something like that. So, so it's been pretty successful. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move, remove the infrared over. I've got it right up above. You're going to see a lovely view of the fan. Um, hopefully you'll see some um, glow. I have a heat uh, eye shield. I'm going to switch this baby on. Hopefully you get to see some reflection of the glow. Yeah, you see it light up in there. So unfortunately I can't show you anything, you know, just fantastic. But I'm going to work on heating this guy up a little more. And um, it already says it's at 240, which is kind of crazy. Um, it sure heated up fast, but I'm going to let it cook for a little longer. I've got some flux in there. I might see the flux smoke a little bit. And then I think um, the chip is ready to remove. And then I'll rework it. I'll replant the solder on the legs. I'll clean off this platform. And I'm going to try putting this chip on again using this system. And I'll try to make a video of it. It takes a while, but, and this is a lovely view you get of the fan. But at least you can see the light blinking on and off. So, um, this, this, package costs around 450 bucks by the time I was done. It has a soldering iron connected, a heat gun connected, which I'm not sure I like actually. I think I prefer just a separate station for the heat gun and soldering iron and let this guy do the hot plate and the infrared heating. So let me see if this is smoking. I also have running today, I, I got a fume extractor. I'll try to do a review on that and show you guys what I'm using for a fume extractor. Um, it catches about 75% of it. Sometimes I forget and I have a heat gun pointed away from it and it blows, you know, some of the fumes. I actually work in my living room and, and my wife doesn't like to smell um, those chemicals. So, all right, let me take a peek in here. Looks pretty good. I think it's probably hot. So what I'm going to do is I, I pick up my air gun so it heats up to 450. I'm going to let it heat up before I pull this off. I better find my tweezers. Let's see, I got to use those tweezers. Okay. Get the hot air gun in the right hand. Okay, so I'm going to flip this guy off. It'll continue to cool. Okay, so move him out of the way. Move him out of the way. And go right in with the hot air gun. And I'm going to extract this chip. He might already be off. 
not quite. All right, so let's just finish heating him up. The base is hot, the top's hot. Get this guy loose. I probably didn't let it sit. Usually I let it cook on a hot plate for quite a while, but I was kind of in a hurry to uh, make this video. There we go. Got the chip off. All right, put the hot air gun down. I'm gonna turn off the plate, let this guy cool down and then rework the video. So um, that was relatively pretty easy. I've seen the chip loose that'll come off even with the infrared if I took longer. So I'm gonna re rework this area and I'm gonna put the chip back on and hopefully I can make a video of that too. It's a little tricky because this little wire you can't put on the chip that you're trying to see because it needs to float around. So you gotta kind of put it close and then your temperatures aren't exact. So it's a little challenging there, but thank you for watching this. And um, hopefully I will show you how to put on a chip very, very soon and have the parameters all set up for you. Thank you.